It's the Celebrity MasterChef semi-finals, and the best eight cooks are left. It feels absolutely amazing to be in the last eight. It's like you're climbing up, and the air is getting thinner. <laughs> they will face their toughest challenges yet. <gasps> Little days of flower pot. Now it's sink or swim, <laughs> as two celebrities will be going home. Guys, the sticky toffee's burnt. What? Oh, their expectations look so high. Ah! The imposter syndrome is kicking in, and I'm starting to feel completely out of my depth. I've thrown myself into this hook, line, and sinker. Semi finals, it's a big challenge. It's early morning, and the eight celebrities are dockside in pool. Welcome to the Celebrity MasterChef semi-final, and of course, welcome to the headquarters of the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Since it was formed in 1824, the RNLI have saved over 140,000 lives. Wow. And 95% of the people that work for the RNLI are volunteers. Wow. You have the great honour of preparing and serving lunch to 120 of these heroes. Today is a huge event, and it's also a team event. Dev, Kate, Becky and Brian, you are the red team. Henri, Erika, Leslie, and Angelica, you are the blue team. Lunch is at one o'clock. It's your semi final. Off you go. I want to be as honest as possible and say I'm massively out of my depth. We're cooking for people who do a really important job. It's really, really daunting and overwhelming. There's so much to it. Look at this glorious table. Look at that. Wow. It's fantastic. Each team will have three hours to prepare lunch, which must include a meat, fish and vegetarian dish, and a pudding. Each one of our teams have got a huge amount of responsibility. What's important is who can get it done well and on time. The red team's ingredients include whole pork loin, chorizo, crab, smoked haddock, tiger prawns, rice, potatoes, and apples. Well, we're thinking meat-wise. We've got the pork. We need something to give it something, because pork can be quite bland. Yeah. Dev, what are you thinking, my love? I'm a little overwhelmed, to be honest. Uh... Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's a pepper, right? They got that right. <laughs> <laughs> Could do an orange and pineapple-like tart. Tartan. The blue team's ingredients include lemon sole, brown shrimp, chicken, parsnips, rhubarb, samphire, and brioche. Ooh. That's a lot of chicken. That's a lot of chicken. I think we should do the chicken. <laughs> yeah. What carbohydrate have we got? Potatoes. Sweet. Sweet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. The fish look good, but you have to know how to to make the fillet. That's another thing that I have to learn. Got to think of a good garlic. vegetarian because... For eggs, we've got cheese. We could do a kind of frittata. Who's the leader? Who's the boss? Seems like Becky. Becky. <laughs> Becky's the boss. <laughs> Becky's very cool under pressure. So, we're going to do a seafood curry, and we're going to serve that with some rice. The pork, we're going to put it into chops, put it in the oven, cook it slow with loads of apples and sage and white wine. What about vegetarian? Where are we with vegetarian? I was going to make a spanakopita kind of version, so like a greens pie. There's no spinach there, but I was going to use the leeks, do some phyllo pastry, a ricotta. Dessert. 
Shall we go and have a little look and see what we can find? Yeah, Becky? OK. Stop. Come. I'm not a fan of bread and butter pudding. That's my thing. For so me, what would just, you order? I would order a sticky toffee pudding that's got way more in it or something fruit that's tangy, like your lemons and... Your so why don't you do a sticky toffee pudding? What about nuts, nuts, though, for the vegetarians? Hello. Hello. Hi. John. Hello. Right. Meat, fish, vegetarian dessert. Mm, Meat's pretty simple, like, by the looks of it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. What are you doing? We were thinking of doing chicken breast stuffed with a filling, maybe. Right, so you haven't decided on that. That's good. Fish, what have you decided on? <laughs> Nothing. We've been talking for, like, right. a few hours. Vegetarian? Uh, yeah. Put a lot of veggies and Talking about that. <laughs> Right, so good. We haven't done that. Dessert. Yeah, I've got to dessert. Right. Yeah. I think we're kind of faffing a bit, but I think that's inevitable at the beginning because there's lots of ideas. But yeah, we'll we'll kind of we'll get there. What a challenge! Feeding the guys and girls of the RNLI. I want this to be an amazing occasion. Organisation and communication today are absolutely key. Regardless of how fast you can chop, you're going to have to work together as a team. With their menu decided, the red team gets straight to work. Team leader Becky has put Brian in charge of portioning the pork loin into chops. In between the ribs, good. to cut one portion off. She's good, isn't she? Okay. The red team, pork chops, cooked with onions, sage and apples in cider. Lovely idea. Right. Chopping as I go. Just cut it there, cut it there, cut it there, and there you go. At the back of the tent, DJ Dev focuses on creating a cumin, paprika and chilli spice mix for the seafood curry. Be careful, don't use very much because it's full of chilli, yeah? This is my spice blend that's in danger right now of suffocating everybody. Ugh. That's going to scan really well in my curry. Ugh. Dev is getting on with his curry, which I think is a great idea. A seafood curry, prawns, smoked haddock, could be absolutely delicious. It's quite a delicate process. And from the way it's burning my eyeballs out of my skull, I might have already put too much in. I'm helping Dev with the seafood curry by getting all the lovely crab meat out, the dark meat and the light meat. Oh. Kate? Yes, my love. Once you do this, are you, are you on the vegetarian? <laughs> yeah. And what is the vegetarian? The vegetarian is a spanakopita, so it's green spinach, feta cheese and pine nut pie. Good. You've got everything you need? I think so. We haven't got any spinach, but we're going to do it with leeks. You can do a Greek spinach dish with no spinach. <laughs> We'll just not call it that. We'll call it green pie. Because you can't find like any spinach. I haven't found it yet. That doesn't mean it's all not right, there. All right, all right, all right. I like it. Fruit and veg. Get your spinach. Oh, that's not. That's charred, isn't it? No, that's spinach with Is a big it? with a big stalk. How much butter do you need? How much sugar do you need? Across the kitchen, team leader Becky has decided to make a dessert of sticky toffee pudding. Just times in my recipe that I use at home. So I'd, I'm trying to tell myself it will be OK. <laughs> the red team made decisions fast, which meant they could get cooking fast. And that's really good, because they're going to need every single minute possible. Over in the blue tent, tennis star Henri has started work on prepping the 20 chickens for roasting. We have a little chicken here. We have to do it. We have to be ready. We're going to put some olive oil with uh, some shallots <laughs> and stuff, which will be very flavoured. Oh, yeah. How about we put uh, some of these in? With 20 minutes gone, the rest of the team still haven't decided on a menu. I'm happy to do a bread and butter... I don't know. They do rhubarb batons. They're ever so easy to do. They can plop on the top to make it look nice. I love the way you said plop. Plop. <gasps> if you don't start cooking really soon, you're out of time. OK. Henri's very happy with a knife and an animal. 
Who's boss? Does somebody have to be? Yes. You can't have a team without a captain. OK, we'll pretend I'm boss. Good. <laughs> Vegetables. You want to do the potato gratin? The blue team took a really long time to decide. Finally, they've settled down. To accompany the roast chicken, Leslie and Ulrika are making potato dauphinoise. Actually, if we get a bit lower, we'll get more in the bin, won't we? There's a thought. So now we're kneeling in homage to the potato. <laughs> the potato. We could do with cake, couldn't we, here? We should do a little bit of a prayer thing. I make mean, dolphin wiles quite regularly at home, but for, like, six people. Maybe 12. Not 70! I don't know if this is going to be... Keep going, darling, just keep going. I don't know whose idea this was. <laughs> Surely not mine. Meanwhile, Angelica is taking charge of the vegetarian option and is working on a pasta dough for a mushroom ravioli. So we wanted to do a vegetarian dish. That is nice, because sometimes I think vegetarians get a raw end of the deal. I don't mind making pasta. My husband and I, we make it at home. We love Italian food. There is a lot of work to do today, so hopefully we'll have enough variety so that everyone goes away and feels, you know, tip-top shape to go out back on the boats. Founded in 1824, the RNLI has been saving lives at sea for almost 200 years. We're going to put your head up first, all right? On average, 22 people a day are rescued off the coasts of the UK and Ireland. The recently opened all-weather lifeboat centre in Poole houses facilities for maintaining and building the next generation of lifeboats. The state-of-the-art Shannon class. The new boat is capable of actually doing 25 knots where the boat before was only doing 17 knots. So it's able to get to its casualties a lot faster. An hour of cooking time has gone. The red team's pork chops are portioned and ready for roasting with segments of Bramley apples. Beautiful rhyme, we see. Oh, yeah, I'm going, I'm peeling, I'm putting them over there. Oh, gosh. Don't know if I could make it. Right, this pork needs foil on it. Brian, listen to me, look at me, listen Yes, mate, I'm looking at you, I'm this listening to you. This pork will need foil on it. Foil foil. Put in the oven. In as the oven. soon as humanly possible. OK, all right, then. Bossy women. We're not bossy, we're natural born leaders and we're assertive, Rebecca. Right. Go, get it in. OK. Brian is being a soldier. Brian is just doing what everybody tells him to do. So what else we got going on? How can I help you? Come here, Brian, let me show you. Yes, Mum. So we're cleaning prawns. Cleaning prawns. We're taking the head and the tail off and all the shell. What well, Deb's doing the actual curry, just preparing the prepping the, uh, the, uh, the prawn section of that. Cleaning them out, and, yeah, there's a little bit in there that you've got to dig out. Like there. Yeah. I'm going to put the fish in maybe half an hour, 40 minutes before service. I don't want to overcook it. The curry's on. It smells good. Maybe I should taste it. It's kind of bland. It needs a bit more kick. It's way too tomato-y at the moment. Team leader Becky's sticky toffee pudding mix is almost made. My hands are freezing. I don't know about anyone else's. Yeah. <gasps> Whoa! Can someone taste my curry, please? Yeah, I'll taste it. I still think it's bland. It's hot. Spicy. It's fine. It's not too spicy at all. It's a nice heat. OK. I know what you mean. It needs something else. Mm. And I don't know what. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. 
Reverend Kate is well underway with making her vegetarian spanakopita, a spinach and ricotta pie to which she's added leeks. I must not rip the phyllo, yeah, I must sure. not rip the phyllo, I must not rip the phyllo. So what does she go and do? Rip the phyllo. I'm really impressed with the red team. They've got this stuff organised. It smells good at the moment. <laughs> what I reckon is going to happen, it's all a little bit chilled now. <laughs> this is going to get quite manic as it gets closer to actual lunch service, so I'm trying to do the best I can to just prepare for when the anarchy hits. You need to be ready in about an hour and a half, ready to plate everything up. Over half the cooking time has gone, and the blue team have only just finished prepping their chicken main. I think we need to get those in. It takes 40 minutes, huh? Because it can rest, can't it? And then you can make a sauce out of the juice. But the clock is ticking, and no one has made a start on the fish course or the pudding. I'm getting a little bit worried because we need to be getting the fish prepared and we've got to fill it that. Puddings. Oh, gosh. But as soon as Omni's finished, I'm going to help him fill it. Uh, uh, that's what I'd like. Yes, that would be lovely. So is your chicken in? Oui, chef. Oui, chef. Then we do the fish, huh? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, big job. Messy job. The fish course from the blue team, I think, is great. Little sole poppets wrapped around bits of sole, some brown shrimps inside, a nice sauce made from all the seafood, fantastic. However, the blue team now have realised the enormity of the task. And the fish prep is going to take a long time. But it's good to be on the rush, you know? You feel the pressure, and then that's what you have to do. I feel like a fish wife. Hopefully, I can get this in the oven within the next 14 days. I'm now getting concerned about the blue team. They haven't started their dessert yet, and it's an hour to lunchtime. OK, the potatoes are in. If I've come all the way down here and I don't get a pudding, I'm going crazy. In the RNLI Training College, the volunteers have almost finished a strenuous morning of sea survival exercises. So our volunteers go through a range of training. They have to learn how to get into a life raft, sea survival training, as well as capsize. We're used to going out in storms, so I'm looking forward to see what storms they're cooking up in the kitchen. We've had a busy morning training, so yeah, really looking forward to seeing what serves up today. Let's do it again. <laughs> to go, OK? In the red tent, Becky's team is on track. Their pork, rice and spanakopita are in the oven. And her sticky toffee pudding is almost ready to bake. Guys, that is good. I'm going to go for that end one. Too many cooks. What do we think, guys, to serve with the toffee sauce? Pouring cream, or do you want whipped cream with a bit of vanilla? Uh, I'd go pouring cream. It's time. It's not. We've got, we've got time to do both. I make an executive decision we're doing pouring cream. That's cream on cream. That's my thing. If we've got enough time, let's do a solid cream. Yeah, but if you all think pouring, I want it to yeah, be a I team was only, thing. Yeah, but I was only making a decision for the sake of making a decision. Yeah, but I think we need to do this as a team. OK. Thank you. I think this decision's symbolic. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. Dev? Uh, personally, I like pouring cream on my sticky toffee puddings. I say I like to drown it. Brian? OK, yeah, yeah. But let's go with the pouring cream. Let's go pouring, then. Pouring. Pouring. Pouring, girl. Great. Pouring. Brilliant. With the decision made, Becky checks on the pork. This pork is very rare. Can you turn the oven up? Yeah, then have to. And turn the oven up. Oh, it's on max. 
there's 45 minutes to go, and Ulrika's volunteered to make a start on the pudding. So I'm doing some rhubarb, then I'm going to make some brioche, kind of eggy bread type thing, providing all goes to plan. We need to get 24 out of each tray, so I think we need three trays. I'll OK. With Angelica still filleting the sole, Henri begins filling the fillets with the brown shrimp. We're a bit behind with the fish, and I've done this. I'm going to help out with the fish. Before she moves on to the lemon sole, Leslie wants to add a last-minute element to the chicken dish. I'm going to make this very quick stuffing. Do you think we need stuffing? Maybe you're right. I don't know, hon. If you think we've got time, do it. Well, this is a, just a bit of stuffing. Cos I like stuffing with roast chicken, and I've no idea if it's going to work, but I just wanted to make it, cos I've done nothing but peel today. These are really fiddly, and you've got to just hope they stick, stay together in the water. Cos I'm rushing, I'm like... <laughs> OK, guys, you are a bit behind. We know. It's almost lunchtime. Ladies and gentlemen, lunch is in 20 minutes. Yeah, we got this, baby. We got this. Are you happy with the way this pork's cooked? I'm a little bit worried it's going to be like shoe leather because we have to whack the temperature up. And it's overcooked it. And it's a little bit tough, I think. Dev, how's your curry? Curry sauce is looking good. How's everything else? The fish is going in in about 10 minutes. What about your puddings? Right. No, back in. Days are raw, guys. Here you go. No. Over in the blue tent, Ulrika's also concerned about their dessert. It's not cooking at all on the bottom and then cooking like crazy on top. Oh, my God! Oh, is that who's coming to eat? Ah! This has got to come out. Ah! The fish has to go now. <laughs> this is crazy. The lunch crowd is forming, but Angelica is still assembling her 20 ravioli. How many have you done now? Well, we're nearly nine. You've only done eight? Eight, nine, yeah. It looks like all pressure's on you, actually. I've been helping everyone else as well. It's not... I've just been doing this. How long have we got? Ten minutes, everybody! All we've got to do is finish the ravioli and do a couple of sauces, so I think we're good. You think so? Yeah. Leslie says they're doing really, really well. To my mind, that's not one of the four dishes yet finished. Just to put this into perspective, that is the queue for lunch. They haven't come up here to look at the seagulls. They're ready for their lunch. It's a little bit stressful, but we're going to get some delicious dishes up. Oh, their expectations look so high. I've had a glimpse of the menu. It looks quite nice, but obviously the, the proof is in the taste, so we shall see. Food should be going out now. So I'm not sure it's cooked properly, but it is what it is, isn't it? It's not great. Red team, it's food on the table. That's how we roll, baby. That's how we roll. Blue team! This is not working well for Angelica. Very busy. I've worked up with a hell of an appetite, so I'm really hungry. Right, these need five minutes, don't they? Yep. Yes, boss. Yes, chef. That chicken looks really good. Yummy, yummy, yeah? It's slow, but it's a fabulous we're there, chicken. We're there. Uh, no, I'm slow. Them, That's your fish done. Come on. Ten minutes late, and the red team is still left waiting. Come on, you guys. Food's going cold up in here. We're ready. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Pork yeah. for me, please. Pork, that's what I like to hear. The red team is serving pork chops with pan-roasted potatoes, broccoli and asparagus, and a cider and apple sauce. There you go, mate. I went for the pork today. It was really nice. I think my favourite part of it was the apple, but the pork was a little bit dry, so I have actually left most of the pork, which I feel a little bit bad about. The texture of the pork was good and maybe a little bit dry, but 
The apple came through. Asparagus was also really, really nice, really fantastic. The apples and the onions across the top of the sage is really delicious. The problem is that pork chop is dry. It's as dry as the inside of a lifeboatman's boot. This is the chicken here. The blue team is also pulling in the crowds with roast chicken, dauphinoise potatoes, and mixed roasted vegetables. Can I have a chicken, please? Chicken? Potatoes for you, sir? Yeah, your potato chap. I thought the chicken looked really good, and it's huge, so I was very... <laughs> it's amazing. The chicken is gorgeous, yeah. Dauphinoise is garlicky and creamy. I really, really like that. That's reminiscent of a good roast dinner, that is. The chicken is lovely and moist, but the veg on the side are nice. It needs a sauce. But guys, have you seen how many people are queuing up for us compared to the blue team? On the red team, Dev's seafood curry made with crab, prawns and smoked haddock, served with rice and a chilli and bean sprout salad is in high demand. Thank you very much. That's all. all those people waiting for your curry. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's the best plate yet, I think. I went for the fish curry and it was absolutely delicious. One of the best I've ever had. Very nice, very nice. The right heat, definitely. Not too hot. Looks good. Lots of trimmings, lots of nice little fresh bean shoots and chilies to, to get your teeth into. Spicy hot, sweet with tomatoes. Really, really lovely. The prawns, Brian cleaned every single one of them. And it paid off, they're delicious. The blue team's fish course is oven-baked lemon sole filled with brown shrimp on a bed of samphire with a caper butter sauce. I'll have the fish, please. <laughs> oh, this is fish? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much. It was excellent. It's never felt yeah. Best thing I've had so far. It was spot on. Really nice, really well cooked. Yeah, it was lovely. Juicy, tender, <laughs> just right. Delicate little fish dish, this, but it's a little too delicate, in my opinion. It's like a starter. Considering they had to fill all those fish, they've done a decent job. The brown shrimps with it and the caper butter is lovely. For the vegetarians, Kate's made ricotta, spinach and leek spanakopita with corn on the cob and a side salad. Nice big bit of pie. Nice big lovely. bit of pie. The vegetarian option, which isn't something I'd normally go for, but it was really nice. Flavours all work very well. Salad was also nice. It's a very nicely put together vegetarian dish. However, the spinach is like wet and juicy, and it's got undercooked pastry and the occasional pine nut. It's such a shame because the ingredients are absolutely right. With service for the mains almost finished, Angelica still hasn't got out her mushroom ravioli. Veggies, come on, veggies! Guys, they're waiting for vegetarians. There you are, look, vegetarians Yay! arrived. Yay! <laughs> ravioli, brilliant. Even if the ravioli's made, I'm not sure two ravioli and a bit of sage butter is going to satisfy a hungry vegetarian. Can I have the vegetarian ravioli, please? With pleasure. Would you like it with lots of veg as well? Mushroom ravioli. It was a bit of a delay of it coming out, but it was served uh, with such passion. <laughs> I like the flavour of the filling. I like the sage flavour. I like the almost woodiness of the mushrooms. But this doesn't constitute a plate of food, which is why they've ended up putting roast vegetables on the side. The mains have all been served. Now both teams need to get their desserts out. What is this here? Stuffing. Oh, I can't believe I forgot my stuffing. I'm sorry, I made stuffing for you all. And I forgot to serve it. I'm sorry. It's very nice. So we're just having those little intercourse <laughs> extra. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Between course <laughs> extra. Sorry. I'm going now, I'm out of here. You can have it with custard if you like. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be all right. How's your puddings back? Ruined. Why, love? They're burnt. No. Guys, the sticky toffee's burnt. What? It doesn't look that bad, Becky, honestly. It's burnt, Deb. Maybe you'd like to take the top layer off or something? Come on. You're a genius. It's cooked, it's not raw, it's not going to make anyone ill, and we're all good. Ooh. 
Doesn't yeah, that look better? Yeah, it does look nice. Do you yeah. know what? I think you've pulled it back. We're on it. They're waiting for dessert now, I think. They're ready. So They're going to pounce on us. They're going to go, ah, oh, ah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The blue team serving up a brioche bread and butter pudding with a rhubarb and blackberry compote topped with a vanilla cream. To be honest, I've really enjoyed the stuffing. Do you like my rouge-bouche? I'm so pleased, darling. Absolutely perfect. It was absolutely lovely. Really tasty. Very nice. I wish I could do that at home. The brioche with the <laughs> rhubarb, the raspberries and the cream. Very, very good. No complaints. I wish my wife could make something like that at home, oh, but... Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> dessert for the blue team was an afterthought, and they actually just managed to scramble something out at the end. It's got, like, a thick, waffly pancake base, and it's got some sweet, sharp blackberries and vanilla-flavoured cream. Nice. Go on in, get in there, get tucked in. Just as popular is Becky's sticky toffee pudding with toffee sauce and vanilla pouring cream. That's what I'm talking about, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't be shy. It was really spongy. I loved the crunchy top on it as well. No, it was it was it was lovely. Way there we go. That's pudding. Not off. Becky was concerned because it started to burn at the top. She saved it. I like that pudding. It's thick, sticky, sweet, and brown, and I think that's a winner. Started the semi finals and a great challenge. They fed 120 people and they did it really well. The blue team showed a great deal of ambition, although they struggled with time. I've been up for about three hours and I'm coming down. It was something unique and it's fun, it's good. And now I can have my coffee and relax. I'm really impressed that the red team really did work hard and pull together as a team. The time flew by, and I'm so, so proud. We absolutely smashed it. Great day all round, very good for morale. I think everyone's looking forward to going into the next stage. The first challenge in the Celebrity MasterChef semi-final, they now know what sort of competition they're in. But very soon, Greg, we're going to lose two of these. Our eight semi-finalists are going to become six. Welcome back, and I hope you all enjoyed your day in the sun with the RNLI. I think it was a great challenge, and every one of you, I think, stepped up in terms of ambition. We want you to keep that ambition. We want you to reach even higher. This is an invention test. An invention test to make a dessert. Something splendid from any of the ingredients behind us. My learned friend knows a little bit about the pudding. It's a big day, because at the end of this, two of you are going home. Ladies and gentlemen, up you come. I'm not a pudding man, so I'm really in trouble. I'm feeling a bit like a rabbit in headlights. It would be easier if there were fewer ingredients. I have no idea what's going on right now. I mean, I'm just going to come up with something and just see if it works. I better hurry up. Time is time is going. You've got one hour and twenty minutes. 
to really give us something delightful. Off you go. So I do scary things all the time. I marry people, bury people, christen people, not necessarily in that order. This is really scary, and I am really nervous. Could you tell me what your dish is, please? So I'm doing a cherry upside down cake, an almond flavoured sponge with a cherry coulee and a toasted almond ice cream with that. So the upside down cake, so you've got the cherries, you've got the sponge on top, you're going to cook it, then turn it out? Yeah. And you're making an ice cream? Yeah. And a coulee? Yeah. Do you know what, Kate, if it wasn't you, I'd say that can't be done. <laughs> but you are a little bundle of cookery energy. Well, that's a big sponge. How's she going to turn that out and cut that into a dainty piece? I'm not quite sure. Kate, as always, is pushing herself. I just hope she can make it look smart. I'm a dessert girl all the way. Then they said an hour and 20 minutes. I went, oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be a challenge. Tell me something. Olympic swimmer, sponge is light, right? If I eat lots of sponge, will that help me float? No. <laughs> but my approach when I swam was, I can't drink alcohol, right, cos that's just a no-go. But I am burning a lot of calories, so I ate cake. Did you? I ate a lot of cake. Did you really? <laughs> Becky is promising us a chocolate and ale cake with a chocolate and ale icing. She's serving that with honeycomb, caramel popcorn and malted cream. I hope that Becky gets it all done. I've done two sweet dishes so far. One turned out a complete disaster. One I reckon I really pulled out of the bag. So today could sort of go either way. Have you got a sweet tooth, Dev? I have got the sweetest tooth. I have a feature on my show called Cake, which is just an excuse for me to eat cake in the studio. <laughs> I've got the sweetest tooth. Really? Yeah. What's your favourite dessert? Oh, man, where do you want me to start? Cheesecake. Um, <laughs> I should say cheesecake, innit? My favourite is what I'm making right now. <laughs> Cheers, Dev. He's making a passion fruit and white chocolate cheesecake with some ginger nut base. Could be absolutely delicious. The problem we've got here Biscuit base has got to set, the cheesecake's got to set, the jelly's got to set, and the white chocolate's got to work with the rest of the cheesecake. 30 minutes have gone. I'm really struggling today. Why? I'm not good for dessert. I'm going to try to do apple tart, but I'm hopeless. Why, why, why? Do you not like desserts? When I used to play, I stopped to eat dessert because I was... So you stopped eating desserts when you were younger? I was putting on weight so much and so quickly when I used to play tennis. That was something I have to stop. If desserts would have got in the way of my career, I would have changed career. Yeah. You had the choice. You chose tennis. I chose tennis and, chose... and the other meal. Looking... <laughs> <laughs> but not dessert. Henri is drawing on his experience from the competition. When he did the mass catering challenge, he did an apple tart fin. And that's exactly what Henri is doing. But this time, he's making his own pastry. He's taking apples and slicing them really, really thinly. He's going to put those on top of the tart, bake the tart, and then put a caramel sauce across the top. It is classic, absolutely. If he gets it right, it could be really, really delicious. I really hope that my dessert would be great. Sometimes simple things are the best. You're halfway. You've got 40 minutes left. What are you making? I am making a fig clafouti. Have you made a clafouti before? I made a clafouti last time was when I was about 15, so a couple of years ago. Ten years ago now? <laughs> yes. It's a long time since you made it. Yes, it is. It's a beautiful tasting dessert clafouti. It's not particularly smart. No. So what do you do about that? Well, I'm going to try and tart it up for you. Hooray! <laughs> Arika is promising us a clafouti. A classic French dessert. It's a baked custard which puffs up and becomes beautiful and light. Sometimes done with cherries, but she's going to do it with figs. 
I've never seen it done with figs. I was drawn to the figs. The figs were calling out to me, pick me. So I figured I would try and create something around that. I love desserts. They're my nemesis. I want to show some skills so that if something goes wrong, they can see that I've got what it takes to go further. That's what I want. Angelica, what are you making? Mini apple tarts, but with a difference. I'm making the apples into a rose shape. What makes them red? I put food colouring in it. You've made the apples red. What do they then sit in? I've made a sweet short crust pastry and a little apple custard, and they sit in there. Wow! Will it taste as good as it looks? Angelica's taken apples, sliced them very, very thinly, and then she's shaped them into roses and put them into tart cases. That's something I've never seen before. Could be really interesting. You guys need to know that you have 30 minutes left. Hood time. to kind of bring what you've learned so far. And I suppose what I've learned so far is to leap in the dark. Hopefully, we can do it again. Brian? Sir? You do realise, don't you, that if you can get this far, you can go further? Well, I'm just one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> one dish at a time. What are you making, Brian? I like mangoes and like cheesecake, so I'm just trying to see if I can go for a mango cheesecake. Do you bake your cheesecake or just mix it and assemble it? Mix it, assemble it, and hopefully get it in the old freezer to... Give it, give, it, give it some body. I love cheesecake. Oh, yeah. Brian is trying to get the top of his cheesecake set, so he's running backwards and forwards to the blast chiller. Time is slipping away very, very fast indeed. I'm doing a, um, a peach and almond tart with ginger ice cream. Are you? Yeah, hopefully. I used to do a lot of baking when I was younger. My dad, actually, before he was a railway signalman, was a master baker. So oh. there was a lot of pastry in my childhood. Right, Leslie, all I say is I hope that pud's good enough for your dad. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> Making a sweet makes me feel nervous, but excited. because half of you is just absolutely terrified it's all going to go wrong. And the other half is thinking, yeah, but it actually might be amazing. <laughs> Leslie is promising us ginger ice cream with a hot peach and frangipan tart. Could be absolutely delicious. Leslie is putting the frangipan in the oven with only 15 minutes to go. It is touch and go. Last five minutes. Brian, quick. Come on, cork. Come on, let's think about 20 seconds. Get it off the plate. That's it. Time's up. For her place in the final six, Becky has baked a chocolate and ale cake with caramel popcorn and a malt cream on honeycomb. I love the chocolate and caramel. I love your cake. Your cake is as light as a feather. Your buttercream across the top is very heavy, which I'm fine about. I think it's really tasty, Becky. I think you should be happy with that. The malt in the cream matches the flavour of the beer in the sponge, which I like very much indeed. Definitely shown some skill. Becky, you are just really growing in confidence. And I think that's displayed on your plate. I think you've done a good job here. At the end of the day, I wanted to be able to serve something that was cooked and edible. Hopefully, I pulled it off. Brian's made lime cheesecake topped with a mango puree and served with raspberries. 
it's almost cheesecake. You've still got the metal disc. Yes. Underneath the cake. Yeah. Well, it was a thing of time, you see. I gotcha. Really no need to put two cheesecakes on one plate. One would have been absolutely ample. Your creamy filling inside, I quite like the flavour of. The mango puree across the top actually adds a lovely freshness to it, but the whole thing is collapsing. The actual base itself, that buttery base, has no butter in it, so it hasn't been set. It's just breadcrumbs. Indeed. Oh, Brian. It's a bit of a mushy mess. You don't have technical knowledge of some of the others. However, your palate remains absolutely sound. Obviously, you feel a little dejected because I just wanted to be able to go, there you go, there you go. You know, but uh, that's the way the cheesecake crumbles. Dev's cheesecake is flavoured with orange zest and topped with a passion fruit jelly, served with white chocolate and ginger sauce. I like the flavour of the passion fruit and the white chocolate. I also like the ginger base with the orange and the lemon cream in the middle. But all of them coming together is just a bit of a cacophony. You're trying though, Dev. You've done things you've never, you've never used before and I'm really pleased for you. I like your base of, of ginger because I, I think it matches the orange zest in the cream. And then to put white chocolate and ginger again on top of that makes the whole thing far too sweet for me. You must have a serious sweet tooth. I really do. Mixture of emotions right now. Relief that it's over with. A little bit annoyed that there's a few silly mistakes that I've made, but I'm happy that I got something finished, ready to show John and Greg by the end of it. Angelica has created a rose apple tart with vanilla cream and a caramel shard. That is beautiful and so clever. I would never guess that was an apple. I hope that tastes all right, because I am completely wowed by that rose. Your pastry is well made, and everybody likes sweet cream with vanilla. However, the apple itself, though, doesn't deliver enough flavour because it's not cooked down. And if it cooked down, it wouldn't stay in the shape of a rose. But. I don't want to criticise, really, because it looks so pretty and it's so smart. I think you've done very, very well. I'm with Greg on this. This needs apple puree. You know it's an apple tart, but it doesn't taste of apple. But it's a really good start to what could be a magnificent dish. I wanted to try something a little bit elaborate. I don't know if it's paid off. Henri has baked individual tart fine with an almond and vanilla cream. Why have we got two? Because... You're generous. Yes, I'm French. I've seen you cook some fantastic stuff yeah. in this competition. Desserts is obviously your weak point. The favours are classic, but... That pastry needs more cooking, mm. and we need more cream. Yeah. Its presentation is terrible. It's not good, no. OK. Look, there's a, a lovely flavour of sharp but sweet apple, but your pastry needs to have more sugar in it, more butter in it. Your cream on the side lacks sweetness. It's got a little bit of vanilla to it. You know how to cook. I'm sort of disappointed in this. That's more than anything. I'm just disappointed in that. I'm sorry? For me, it was a tough challenge because it was something that I'm not keen to do it. I'm not, uh, I'm afraid to do it. It's my weakness. Ulrika has used figs for her take on the French classic clafouti, accompanied by a vanilla custard. Clafouti is my favorite dessert in the whole wide world. No, I'll get my coat then. I love clafouti, love it.
It's fantastic. <laughs> I can taste the fig. I get the texture of the kafuti around the outside. I love your custard with it. It's great. Oh, thank God. You have a light batter, which is only lightly seasoned, which allows the lovely flavour of that fig to come through. And a fig flavour is delicate, so you've done well there. Custard is very sweet, but you get a little bit of heat of booze. That tastes nice. It was not a recipe that I had done for genuinely, well, 35 years. Bit of a risk. Hopefully, there'll be some reward. <laughs> Leslie has made a peach and almond frangipan tart and a ginger ice cream. That's not quite frozen as much as it should be, so we could sort of call that, I don't know, ginger cream, perhaps, instead. <sighs> and... Leslie, your pastry's perfect. It's really lovely. It's buttery, it's soft, it's cooked really nicely, and it falls apart. Your flavour in your ginger ice cream is fantastic. The problem is what we've got here is an uncooked frangipan, and frangipan is made from ground almonds and eggs. That means that's raw egg in there. I know. Which is a real shame. Yep. It's not quite cooked, you know that. However, there's nothing wrong with your technique. We just need another 10 minutes. <laughs> ah! It's just beyond annoying. I'm so angry with myself. I'm... I'm just so disappointed and angry with myself. I really am. Sorry. <laughs> Finally, Reverend Kate has made a quiche, cherry and almond upside-down cake with a pistachio and almond crumb served with an almond-flavoured ice cream. I love that. Yeah. Mmm. Your sponge there is really soft and you've got some lovely, almost like wine flavour coming out of there. I think that dish could look prettier. However, I don't think it could taste better. I think that is absolutely lovely. What I really love about it is there's two elements, almonds and cherries. And they're used in different flavour profiles and different textures, which means you go on this great journey of cherry and almond, and I think that's wonderful. The whole thing rocks and rolls. I'm a bit shell-shocked, if I'm honest, cos I thought it was OK, but they seem to think it was brilliant, so... I don't really know. Big challenges, tough challenges. Cooking for 120 people, then back in here, invention test with the sweet stuff. Can we start at the better ones? I think Kate did really well. I loved her cherry sponge. She made a coolie, she did an ice cream, which was absolutely delicious. Kate has sailed her way through to the next round, that's for sure. Brilliant. There was one person in here who cooked who you said the dish was fantastic. No, it's Ulrika. The clafouti was sound. I thought it was good, you loved it. Ulrika through? Ulrika through. Becky really pushed it today. I think Becky's dish was really tasty. She put a lot of work into that dessert. Then we have got Angelica. Didn't quite deliver on flavour. However, she's ambitious. Now, I've never seen an apple turned into a rose. It was a really beautiful dish. She deserves to go through, I think, just on ambition and skill. Deb's dessert wasn't perfect, but the work was there, the ambition was there. But it was too sweet. Yeah. If we put Deb through, I want better from him in the next round. We've got three people in this room, the dessert didn't work. Brian attempted a cheesecake Loads of flavour on the plate. However, it was not a mango cheesecake, it was a mango crumble. I believe that Leslie knows how to make pastry, knows how to make frangipan and knows how to make ice cream. What I don't think Leslie was able to do today was look at the clock correctly. Henri's apple tart fin, I'm a bit sad about. The cream was a bit wishy-washy, there wasn't enough sugar in it. And although apple's cream and vanilla is a nice flavour, Henri's pastry wasn't cooked. I haven't done enough to go through. With me, I've done nothing, really. If I went home today, I'd feel a little sad. I don't think there's any hope. I didn't cook the thing.
I just really want to thank you for all the hard work, all the endeavour, and I think it's quite remarkable to see the cooks that you are becoming. We're losing two of you. The first person leaving us is Brian. Thanks. Cheers, Pete. Thanks, Brian. Somebody who has a halogen oven and a steamer, we haven't done too badly. So I'm happy. I'm happy. Semi finalist. Can't take that from me, baby. The second person leaving us. Is Henri. I love you. I love you. Still the best chicken in the world. I think it's the right moment for me to leave. It was a great competition. I'm very proud of myself. They all deserve it to be there. They're better than me, and uh, and and that's it. It's good. Congratulations, all six of you. Well done. <laughs> well done. I can't believe I'm still in this competition. I really can't. I feel like I definitely need a strong G and T after today just to get over today. It's been like, ugh. Final six is amazing. More importantly, my kids will be absolutely thrilled. <laughs> They're going to be thrilled. Saying I got through to the final six. Can I get it in writing? Because I almost feel like no one's going to believe me. Next time. It's the last of the semi-finals. And it's a battle for a place in the final four. No, you don't want to touch it. Do not open the oven. Do not open the oven. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Little Daisy flower pots. Little Daisy flower pots. Little Daisy flower pots.